Today's Nonsense Wars production features my new 1 to 48 scale MP36PH, a diesel electric passenger locomotive built by Motive Power. Caltrain, the primary passenger rail service here on the San Francisco Peninsula, purchased six units in 2003 for additional express and limited express trains. But the pending electrification of the line will almost certainly see them leaving service within a few years. As seems to be the case with a lot of train projects, I started this one a long time ago, doing work on the bogies, the body, and the hardest part, the cab. I wanted to finish this now, partly because of the impending retirement, but also because I wanted to build a buggy motor powered locomotive, uh, something I had not seen done before. The MP36 seemed like a perfect candidate with its full width body, a necessity for enclosing the five wide motor. Let's look at the exterior construction first. I built the majority of the body studs up, uh, basically everything from the front bonnet back to the rear bulkhead. I made the bonnet itself studs forward in order to accommodate the large bows. These do a decent but not perfect job representing the shape of the prototype and neither does the hinged and double hinged windshield assembly. If this model sticks around long enough, perhaps I will revise these in the future. The sides of the roof have angled studs as well. These connect to the flat center with old hinges and rest on small 1x4 and 1x2 panels. These days, I'm more and more reluctant to use the old hinges because of increasing rarity and cost, but the design choice came from the 2014 work and I did not feel like reinventing the wheel. Finally, the sides of the rear bulkhead itself angle on hinge plates. The roof comes off easily to reveal the drivetrain, a receiver in the front, battery box in the middle, and buggy motor in the back. The buggy motor drives the rear wheels from the high speed output at one to one. The performance of the MP54 convinced me that the MP36 could run well enough with a single powered bogey, though this one has tires. Both trucks also have a significant amount of snot greebling from the frames themselves to the detail on the front and rear drawbar assemblies. So how does it run then? Well, the single bogey doesn't get as much traction as I'd have hoped, especially given the high net weight and the positioning of the battery box toward the rear. Perhaps the buggy motor simply generates too much torque and power uh, the locomotive slips very easily if you try to accelerate quickly, regardless of the load. Still, once it gets going, it really flies uh, as fast, if not faster, than traditional 9-volt trains. With moderate to heavier loads, the PF equipment rather than the traction might limit the MP36's performance. Uh, in both motor testing and train pull, the buggy motor appeared to stall far below the limit Philo observed, uh, probably because the respective electronics could not handle the current. That being said, uh, do these limits manifest under light to moderate loads? I set up a fairly large loop and timed laps with a short MP36 train. I originally did this to compare the performance of the fake and real buggy motors under a quote unquote practical load. The fake motor appeared to run a little faster than the real motor, uh, not by a lot, but consistently enough such that I'm convinced 
a small difference actually exists. Then I decided to change out the PF electronics with RC equipment, uh, the same receiver and ESC I used for the Morgan. RC equipment can usually handle tens of amps rather than the three-ish amps of the V2 receiver, so it definitely should not limit either buggy motor. Sure enough, both showed speed increases of almost 10%, and the fake motor remained about 5% faster. In fact, the fake motor ran fast enough to start flipping the train, and I had to retest with a slightly different shaped loop. So what does this mean? Uh, all data points considered, I'm more and more convinced that the fake motor is more powerful but less efficient than the real motor. Furthermore, traditional LEGO electronics don't really provide enough juice to let these motors really rip. Uh, you will need to use third-party equipment to get the most out of them. Uh, perhaps I know why people haven't done this before, but on that note, this is the end of the video, so have a nice day.